This video contains the definitive answer of how much protein you need to build muscle. That absolute upper limit to which you eat more protein and you build no further muscle. That's what we're looking for, that absolute upper limit. And this video contains the rock solid scientific consensus so you don't need to worry about it anymore. Is it one gram per pound of body weight? Is it just 0.62 grams per pound of body weight? Is it as high as 1.5 or even two grams per pound of body weight? This video will answer that question once and for all. Remember that when we're talking about protein intake for building muscle, the protein we eat is not just for building new muscle. The protein we're eating is for repair and growth. And most of the protein we're gonna eat is actually going to go towards repairing our muscle tissue. So if you're training your whole body over the course of a week, every single muscle in your body is getting broke down and needs to be repaired and then growth. That takes a lot of protein to repair every single muscle in your body. So you'll hear from people, often people that don't know any better, saying, oh, you don't need that much protein. You just need like 60, 70, 80 grams a day. That's really all you need, something above the recommended daily protein intake for sedentary people. But it's simply not true. Our protein requirements are vastly uh, bigger than someone who doesn't lift to build muscle. They're even bigger than people who do other forms of exercise. If you do aerobics, if you do some sort of um, swimming or something like that, you're still an athlete, but you don't need that much protein because you're not breaking down muscle fibers all over your body like we do. So just keep in mind that the differences between a bodybuilder Someone who lifts and wants to build muscle are completely different from the normal person on the street or the person that does running, aerobics, or swimming or something like that. They are completely different. We do need a lot more protein. Okay, I said earlier that we're going to look at this from a scientific perspective. and So I'm not going to look at just one particular study because I could then look at a different study and it'll give... A slightly different answer so the best thing we can do here is to look at a meta-analysis a study of all the studies when scientists sit down and collate all the data from all the studies into an issue and come to a conclusion and what we're looking for is that upper limit remember the absolute upper limit to which you don't build any more muscle that's the optimal daily protein intake and the very best meta-analysis into this issue in my opinion, is the Phillips and Van Loon study from 2011. It gives really clear insights into this issue and provides that definite upper limit. Okay, so here is that study, and I'm going to read from a portion of it. That protein index in the range of 1.3 to 1.8 grams per kilogram per day consumed as three to four isonitrogenous meals will maximize muscle protein synthesis. By the way, that 1.8 grams per kilogram comes to 0.82 grams per pound. So that's the upper limit identified, 0.82 grams per pound. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that comes to 164 grams of protein. But the study does go on to say that elevated protein consumption as high as 1.8 to 2 grams per kilogram, so that's over that 0.82 grams per pound, depending on the caloric deficit, may be advantageous in preventing lean mass losses during periods of energy restriction to promote fat loss. So what that's saying is that you can take your protein consumption even higher when in a calorie deficit. So if you're cutting, if you're shredding, if you're on a calorie restricted diet, bring your overall calories down and either keep your protein consumption the same at that 0.82 grams per pound or even take it higher just to be sure that you don't lose any muscle. Let's also take a look at a graph from that study because it really does help hammer the point home. If you look at that top line, that's for strength athletes. And already you can see the vast differences between strength athletes, sedentary individuals, and even endurance athletes. It's a vast, vast difference. And if you look at the bottom, there's three arrows. The third arrow on the right is pointing to 1.8 grams per kilogram. That's the upper limit. So follow that arrow up to the top where the strength athlete's line is. You can see that's where it tops off. That's the maximum muscle protein synthesis level. Once you start going to 2 grams, 2.5 grams per kilo, it tops off. Nothing else happens. You don't get even more muscle protein synthesis. It tops off. It maximizes at 1.8 grams per kilo. That's 0.82 grams per pound. 
So that's it. That's the scientific consensus. 0.82 grams per pound of muscle is going to give you all the gains you're going to get. Eating any more probably won't. But I still recommend eating one gram per pound. So if you weigh 200 pounds, eat 200 grams of protein. And one of the reasons for that is that you could be an outlier. In statistics, there are always outliers. Perhaps for you as an individual, it's possible you can use 0.87 grams per pound. You might be able to use 0.94 grams. You could be an outlier. You could be leaving gains on the table if you don't go ahead and just eat one gram per pound. If you eat one gram per pound, you cover all bases. You're covered. You're already getting 0.82. You might as well just go ahead and kiss your uh, genetic freak, you might as well just go ahead and eat one gram per pound. And eating that excess won't do you any harm. So if it is 0.82 for you, and you're eating 1.0, it won't do you any harm. Studies show that the excess protein intake is usually converted to glucose and then stored in the muscle as glycogen. It very rarely ends up as stored fat. In fact, I've never seen a study where it actually happens. This is a very, very rare thing. The body just does not really do it. It'll either end up stored as glycogen in the muscle or it'll be converted to glucose and just used for energy. So it can't do you any harm anyway. You might as well just go ahead and eat one gram per pound. Another reason is that if you're cutting, go ahead and eat a gram per pound because you do not want to lose muscle. I always slightly increase my protein intake when cutting and advise others to do so anyway. You've got that peace of mind. It's taken you so long to build this muscle. Why not have the peace of mind that you won't lose any when you're in that calorie deficit? Yes, the scientific consensus is 0.82 grams per pound, but I and many others recommend sticking to that one gram per pound level, and I do for five main reasons. Number one, it's easy to remember. You can't forget. Your protein intake is your weight, whatever your weight is. If you're 200 pounds, it's 200 grams. It's just easy. Number two, you could be an outlier. You could be a person that can build even more muscle, so you might as well try it. It can't hurt. Number three is it can't hurt because any excess is almost certainly going to end up a stored glycogen in the muscle. And that's not a bad thing. That's going to help you lift optimally in the gym. We need that uh, stored glycogen for optimal performance in the gym. Number four, you have that mental clarity, that mental certainty that you've got all the bases covered. You no longer have to think about this. If you're eating one gram per pound, it doesn't matter whether you're bulking or if you're cutting, you've got all bases covered, so you might as well just go ahead and do it. And number five is, it will prevent muscle loss. There is nothing worse than going all year and building muscle and then going on a cutting cycle and losing your gains. You do not have to lose muscle on a cut. That's old stuff from a long time ago where you had to accept. People thought you just had to accept losing muscle when you're on a cutting diet. You do not. I don't. No one that I train or coach ever loses muscle when they're in a calorie deficit and partly that's because of training but it's also partly because of that optimal protein intake so what's your current level of protein intake how much are you getting per day let me know in the comments below and also let me know what you think of one gram per pound are you getting less than that more than that do you think one gram is overkill let me know what you think I hope you find that useful and more importantly I hope you actually use that information so you can get all the gains you possibly can from putting all that time in in the gym and please do subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell i've got some really really good stuff coming up i'm actually thinking about fasting and doing like a real time uh, analysis of and show you guys what happens to my body as i basically eat nothing for a few days that'll be interesting